take you to the West immediately later in the bulletin where Inathalia Kwanza has the very latest, but in the meantime, the suspended parliamentary aspirant of the new patriotic party in the Nalebigo Gambaga constituency, Peter Wuni Baga, has been removed from office as Deputy Director General of the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO. Peter confirmed his removal to join News Thursday night, saying he got the letter around 3 p.m. yesterday. Peter Wuni Baga is on record for accusing the incumbent member of parliament and local government minister Haja Alima Mahama for election fraud. Now, speaking to Joy News on possible reasons for his dismissal, Mr. Baga intimated there's no connection between his dismissal as deputy director general of NADMO and his suspension from the party. He spoke to Ernest Menu. Through that the uh, letter was sent to me, suspending me from the party. The reasons were that I have breached Article 47 of the uh, Constitution of our party, but uh, they did not go further to indicate exactly what crime that I caused. Uh, I just want to, at this point, say that my dismissal is not part of what you are discussing this morning on whether the suspension or the redo talk that I, was, I granted is the reason why I've been suspended. The, the letter just indicated that I have been dismissed from office. So I don't think that you have to lamp up these two things from the suspension stage to the dismissal stage. I'm serving government. Government is different from party. The party suspended me, but government has not indicated the reason. So I want you to get it clear. Very well. That, that, that is fine. So let's talk about your removal from office as a NADMO director. Um, can you tell us the reasons assigned for this decision? There, there were no reasons assigned. There were no reasons assigned. Have you uh, taken steps to find out why it's too early it's too early the letter was received just yesterday evening and so uh, i cannot say that uh, it's too late to find out but uh, the president has the authority to appoint and disappoint so when it comes to that day you don't even have the uh, power to go and ask the president why when he was appointing me i was appointed amongst several other party people who suffered the same way like me, but they didn't get the opportunity to serve in his mm -hmm. government. So if he is taking me out of the government, I will not even want to go and ask why. But, but uh, what, what is your suspicion? I not speculate because uh, uh, he has the power. Now take you to Parliament House, where the NDC MP for North Town, Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa, is questioning why President Ekufadu left out the names of five ministers of state in his latest report to Parliament on the list of presidential staffers. Our national, before we say we are going to open the, the, the airports, what is happening now is an embarrassment. We should not have waited for the Kuwaiti government to say, hey, I've rounded up your guys. We are, we've had enough. Other countries have come for their nationals. You are refusing to come for your nationals. Uh, as for us, we've rounded them up. We are bearing the cost. If you don't open your airport, it's up to you. So this should serve as a wake-up call and let us reach out to Ghanaians in other countries. I hope that the collation of data that is going on, I saw the the notices from the, our missions abroad, from New York, Washington, London, and other places, uh, calling for uh, people who are stranded to send in names. Uh, that was two weeks ago. Again, look at our level of response. So slow, it's as if we don't really want to help. And it's, it's, it's so inept. And, 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 and you see, we are in a, we are in a crisis. People are stranded. People are sleeping rough. The information minister himself confirms that they are aware that some Ghanaians are really, really in a difficult place. They are sleeping rough. They've run out of hotel bills. They've run out of, uh, of, of, of upkeep money. And yet, we are here. Initially, we don't want to evacuate. Then we change our position later. Okay, embassies, 
collate. Let's see what the numbers are. And still no definite position. As we speak, the government, government says government they has, are discussing. Has, government has still, how long is government going to discuss? And that a, a firm decision will be taken subsequently. Isn't the fact that they're allowing the Kuwaitis in, for example, a good first step that at least the will to get it done is there as far as you're concerned? I disagree with your use of the expression allowing the Kuwaitis, as if our government had a choice. These are our own nationals, Ghanaians. The Kuwaiti government has decided to deport them. <laughs> what choice does our government have? We have no choice. They are being deported. We have, no, we, we have no choice. That's why I'm saying that we should not have waited for things to get to this point. We should, we should be embarrassed about our, our lack of agency, the total ineptitude that we have showed so far as our nationals stranded outside are concerned. Look, are we saying that all the, we only Ghana, we are wiser than all the countries who are reaching out? And that is what government, why do we all pay taxes? So that in times like this, it could have happened to any of us. You could have gone out there to do business to, for a short course or to attend a conference and you could have been stranded. Look, the, there is a group in Nigeria, miners, they just went to mine every six weeks. They go to Nigeria to mine three weeks. It's a six to three weeks, you know, routine they follow. I've had cause to read that letter on, 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 on Joe FM, where they indicate that they have money to charter a flight back home. They have money to pay for their quarantine when they arrive. They were denied. Our foreign ministry replied their letter that, no, we are not opening our airport. That is what we did to our own citizens. I don't want to believe that we love foreigners more than our own people, our own Ghanaians. And yet, and, yet, and yet we keep opening our airports every now and then for other governments, other nationals to, ev to be evacuated out of our country. For you as soon as possible, all Ghanaians stranded out there, uh, the, the, the program should be rolled out in order to get them back into the country. Absolutely, absolutely. The, 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 the government, the, the government pussyfooting must, must, must stop the slow pace, slow tortoise pace. Even a tortoise will have long arrived at its destination. This, 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 this government pussyfooting must stop. You also raised concerns about the list of presidential staffers and asking whether there is a reshuffle that Ghanaians are unaware about uh, on, on the floor. What was the point you're seeking to make? Yes, I was referring to the list of uh, 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 staffers at the presidency which uh, President Akufuado has submitted to Parliament, albeit very late, though the letter is dated 30th March. We received it only last week. We are in May. So the President is in breach of Section 11 of Act 463. There is no doubt about that, that the President is in breach. And we expect the President to abide by his oath of office. And the President should stop breaching the Presidential Office Act. But the content is worrying. Parliament is being told that there are only five ministers of state at the presidency. Only five. Meanwhile, last year, we were told that there are 10. And conspicuously missing on the list, as I sought to draw the House's attention, is the senior minister. As I said, we are not aware that the senior minister has been taken out of government or has been reshuffled. Why is he not on the list? Why is the minister responsible for business development not on the list? The Honorable Ibrahim uh, Mohamed Awa. The Minister for Monetary and Evaluation, Dr. Antonio Akutose, he doesn't feature on the list this year. He was on the list last year for the 2018 report. But the 2019 report, Dr. Akutose is not there. So is Professor, Jamfo, Professor Jambafo, the, the Minister of State Responsible for Planning. He is not on the list. The Honorable Dan Kwekuboche, the Minister for Responsible for Regional Organization, is not on the list. You think someone the, is hiding the, something? The, 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 the minister responsible for special development initiatives, the Honorable Mavis Howard Kumsin, is not on the list. What is going on? Why, 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 why is Parliament being treated this way? And remember that this is a, a communication that comes from the President himself, under the President's signature. And yet, not less than six ministers are not on the list. Is it because political appointees are going up? And I have pointed out that, look, we need a cap on the Presidential Office Act. We must now place a ceiling so that this elephantine-sized government, this pension, to just keep increasing the numbers. If you look at the uh, number of uh, junior government 
officials, junior government officials at the presidency. For the 2018 report, there were 254. It has shot up now to 270. That is worrying. In terms of Pre the overall numbers, President the indication is that it actually went down comparing uh, 2018 and 2019. What they did cleverly was to reduce some staff with the civil service, civil and public service. That's not our concern. As for civil servants, they will retire. You can always move them out. Ask, you can second them to other ministries. That's not a concern. The concern where you must focus attention is the political appointees. The list of political appointees, and that keeps going up. Look at all the categories. The presidential staffers, it was 27 in 2017. The 2018 report said it had gone up to 28. Now it's 36. Junior political officers. It's gone up from 540. Sorry, from 254 to 270. So all the categories of political appointees keep going up. And now what we are seeing is that ministers are not featuring in the report as though somebody wants to massage the numbers and make it look as if, you know, the numbers are going down. But I'm surprised that the majority leader received the report and as he said, he has not averted his mind to read. I'll encourage him to read it. And, and, and he, he must read it. You are the majority leader and and Minister for Parliamentary Affairs. Uh, uh, it's untenable. I'm not uh, impressed with the majority leader uh, that such a major report, uh, you know that I've been raising this matter on the floor consistently since the president breached when it, uh, we went past March and he had not submitted this report. <clears throat> I hope that the majority leader will read it and will get back to the president and they will bring us a more accurate report, a report that is sacrosanct, that reflects the, 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 the facts, the truth, the reality. That's all we want. Now, the coronavirus pandemic has wreaked havoc on many social and traditional practices. This is due to the restrictions placed on social gatherings in major parts of the world, including Ghana. As the ban on social gatherings like funerals still remains in force, Joy News' Beryl Ernestina Richter looks at the trend of funerals among the Ga people. Family and friends mourn the loss of their loved one, Rosmond Makudowona. They will and burst into dirges as the remains of their loved one lies in state at the Cornelius Adumwadowona Way in Osu. Some visibly shaken family members and friends are unable to hold back their tears as they fall past the body of the deceased. There are no comforting hugs or handshakes. As the people mourn, they are also mindful of contracting the virus. An elder of the family, Jonathan Norte Dowona explains, they decided to strictly abide by the restrictions on social gathering, even during the planning of the burial and funeral of their deceased relative. It was decided at the pre-burial meeting on 28 April to abide by the president's directive. We only allowed them to briefly extend their condolences to the family. One of the main features, according to Ga customs and traditions, that precedes the burden of the corpse is Kochagbamo. This rite is very significant among the Ga people. Before the outbreak of coronavirus in Ghana, this ceremony was characterized by elaborate fanfare and extravagance. Here is Nomo Blafo III, Gablafo Wulomo of Asre. Currently, it's done in a way as if people are going to marriage or something. But during this period, you will find about two or three people just carrying this thing uh, to where they're supposed to take it or to the house where the Kojagbamo will be performed before the few people who just go and bat the cops, they will only go to the mortuary. Dennis Ni Ajay is one of the sons of the deceased. He strongly believes his late mother would be happy with the family's decision to organize a small gathering. I know and believe that she will be very happy. The Dawona family is not the only one to have taken the decision to bury their departed loved one in this COVID restrictions era. 
That's alive on Joe News today with me, Daniel Dazi. Up next is Business with Daryl Crow. Good afternoon. Welcome to Business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Government has described as unfortunate Ghana's addition to the list of money laundering and terrorist financing countries. It says it has already, uh, in partnership with several international bodies, taken steps to improve the environment against money laundering. George Raffi has more. The European Union earlier this month put Ghana on the list of countries with deficiencies in anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing framework. This is due to claims by the European Union that the country has strategic deficiencies in anti-money laundering and financing of terrorism. But the Ministry of Finance in a statement noted that it is surprising the European Union because Ghana over the years had demonstrated strong commitment to strengthen its anti-money laundering and counter-financing terrorism. It argues that this move is coming at a time that the Financial Action Tax Force and other relevant international agencies have always acknowledged Ghana's efforts in enhancing its anti-money laundering regime and various platforms that the European Union itself was represented. The Finance Ministry had argued that it is unfortunate that the European Union took this action without any proper engagement with government concerning any shortcomings that needed to be addressed. On the contrary, when Ghana's progress report was being discussed at a recent international meeting in Paris, no adverse comment came from the European Commission. The Ministry of Finance is therefore surprised at the European Commission to mention Ghana as one of the countries that have failed to put in place structures to protect itself from anti-money laundering and terrorism financing. Now, government statistician uh, Professor Samuel Kopnainim has advised potential job seekers to disregard rumors of job offerings through social media. According to him, some unscrupulous people are using the name of the statistical service to take money from job seekers in the name of getting them recruited for the national census. Professor Nim warns the corporates to desist from the practice or face the law when caught. It's come to the notice of Ghana's statistical service that some fraudsters are demanding monies from unsuspecting applicants who would want to work with Ghana Studies Card Service in different capacities to ensure that we cover the whole country and cover it well in terms of quality data. And some information is on the social media that we have engaged some individuals using mobile money accounts to collect money from prospective unsuspecting applicants, indicating that they can offer them a job on the census or give them a place of their choice. We want to put on record, on, on record that Ghana Studies Card Service, first of all, has not engaged any individual or agency to collect money from any person in the, in the hope that that person would get a job or that person would place in a district of his or her choice. Ghana Studies Card Service does not operate a mobile money account. Ghana Studies Card Service is a government institution, and for all those that we engage to offer services for us, we do not take money from them in this regard. What we do is to assess your CVs to identify whether you are better suited to be a supervisor, to be an, an enumerator, or to help us at the headquarters in terms of consultancy services to ensure that we conduct a, a smooth and successful um, 2020 population and housing census. Thank you.